Today's course will deal with one particular application of speech acoustics, namely automatic speech recognition by a computer. And by automatic speech recognition, we mean the transformation of spoken language of a speech signal into an orthographic text. We as humans can deal with this task quite easily, but for a computer, it's much more difficult. And this is related to the context in which speech recognition takes place. We as humans need to understand the language, perhaps also the dialect, and adapt to the speaking style. We can deal with a variety of speakers, uh, which we know, but also which we don't know. And for a computer, this is much more complicated, because the computer might have to adapt to a particular speaker, and the speaker might also behave non-cooperatively in a, a forensic application, for example. We as humans can deal with a variety of target units, of sentences, of words. We have a large vocabulary. And for a computer, this is much more complicated to deal with a large vocabulary. And finally, the speech recognition takes place in an environment where we as humans can abstract from. We do not concentrate on background noise. We can deal with speech which has been transmitted through telephone channels. And all this is more complicated for a computer. Thus, automatic speech recognition for a computer is still quite a difficult task. One of the major difficulties in speech is that speech is not a sequence of individual sounds but it's a continuous signal. And we as humans can deal with the signal by not only recognizing it, but also by understanding it. Here you see two parts of a sentence, to recognize speech and to recognize speech. Both sound very similar, but for us as humans, it's quite clear that only the first sentence makes sense. That is, to recognize speech is something we can interpret and understand, whereas to recognize speech is a little bit odd. This shows that we as humans do not recognize speech, but we directly understand and interpret it. Second, a second difficulty comes from the fact that the articulation of an individual sound depends on the articulation of the neighboring sounds, and this effect is called the co-articulation effect, which we as humans can deal with easily, but for a computer this is far more complicated because the computer needs to take into account the neighboring sounds when identifying individual sounds. So we as humans do not recognize but directly interpret speech, and we do that with our basis of background knowledge, which we have learned throughout the years. For the computer, we need to teach this background knowledge to the computer in an explicit way. For example, we can teach the computer of how speech is produced, the source filter model, for example, by selecting appropriate input features, features which contain all the information which is necessary for identifying individual sounds. We also need to teach the computer how a speech signal, which is typical for a sound or class of sounds, the phonemes, looks like. And this is done in the so-called acoustic model. We also need to tell the recognizer which sounds are allowed in a particular language. That is, we have to teach him the vocabulary and the pronunciation dictionary of how individual words are pronounced. And finally, we have to teach the recognizer also how individual words may follow each other in a particular language. That is, we have to give him a language model or grammar. All this is explicit information which we need to put into the recognizer. Now let's have a look into the approach which is taken by the computer in order to recognize speech. The approach which is actually used is a pattern recognition approach. That is, the computer compares patterns which it can extract from the speech signal coming in to pre-trained patterns 
from the background knowledge. So there's a comparison between features extracted from the speech signal coming into the microphone and speech signal features which have been learned previously. The most similar features are then the so-called recognized features and they correspond to recognized sounds. Because each sound is produced in a slightly different way, there is only a probability that a, an observed feature corresponds to a sound. So what comes out of a recognize is actually a probability on n best list of most probable words or most probable sentences which might have been said by the speaker. Now let's have a look into the architecture of a modern speech recognizer. The input to the recognition process is actually the speech signal and what we want to get out is a written text. The first step in this recognition process is this one corresponding to the extraction of features and these features need to contain all information about the sounds which were uttered by the speaker but they need to disregard all information which is not necessary for the recognition process like information on who is the speaker, what is the actual speaking style, what is happening in the background, is there noise or something like. All these information need to be disregarded uh, from the feature extraction process. The features are calculated in time units of approximately 20 milliseconds because during this time unit the speech sound is considered to be more or less stable. That is the pattern which it corresponds to is more or less stable as well. Now for each of the feature vectors the first classification block now calculates the probabilities that these features correspond to individual sound classes or phonemes. The approach which is taken here is either a hidden Markov model, HMM, or a neural network. We will explain both approaches in a minute. And the information which is used for this purpose is an acoustic model characterizing how a typical feature vector for a particular phoneme looks like, pre-trained acoustic model, and then also the vocabulary which defines which set of phonemes is allowed in a certain language. This information in terms of phoneme probabilities is then decoded in a second block and this block actually also consists of a statistical classifier. In most cases, this is a hidden Markov model as well. And is then translated into a probability for certain words or sentences. And the output is actually either the most probable word or sentence or a list of most probable words or sentences. The information which is used in the second classification block is again the vocabulary but also information about the sequence of words which are allowed, namely a language model or a grammar. In the following, we will deal with individual steps of this speech recognition process.